Hello everyone, for this video I would like to talk to you about ideal squares and we're gonna focus in on three pieces today. It's gonna be for the knight, we're gonna focus on the knight, we're gonna focus on the bishops and we're gonna focus on the rooks. And the idea of this video is to uh, show you what the ideal squares or the general ideas are for these pieces, okay? Because sometimes we don't know where to place them. So let's go briefly and let's look at the first position here. And generally when we talk about the knights, we like those are the first pieces of the minor pieces that we want to develop, right? And it makes sense because you cannot really bring the bishop out without moving the pawns first. <clears throat> so our regular uh, general idea is we try to control the center as our with our first move, that's a general idea. And after our opponent's response, we usually go with our first development of the minor piece, the knight. That's a gener general idea where we just want to develop our knight first, right? Because it's more flexible if you were to be attacked or something, you can move it easily, right? Um, and here, for example, like general ideas, they would want to also um, <clears throat> protect their attacked pawn here, for example, our opponent instead of making a move like d6 right away because d6 also is blocking the vision of the, the r square bishop for the black pieces right so it's a nice idea to develop a minor piece while defending or attacking something else and that's what we call tempo tempo is when you're having a nice development like a two moves in one kind of thing right all right without obstructing the path of any other pieces so that's a general idea for we develop our knights right away in the Spanish, uh, you know, or like the e4 opening, sorry, king pawn openings. General idea, just develop a knight afterwards. You can go with a knight there, you can go with a knight to c3, things like that, right? So that's the first idea of the knights, just the first pieces to be developed after we moved our pawns, right? In the second position, and this is for the ideal squares for the knight, sometimes we don't know what to do in a position like this right the position is slight advantage for the black pe for the sorry for the white pieces it's like plus one or something if you find the correct moves right um, and here what will be a good plan for the knight so we can think of where would i want my knight to be that will be a nice this will be like a reverse engineering type of uh thinking right so we can think of where would my knight be the best and the first uh, ideas that we can get are, we would like the knight to be an outpost. An outpost means that we're putting our knight or a piece of lower value than the other uh, pieces, heavy pieces or queens or, you know, like things like that, in an ideal square where it's defended by a pawn. Okay, so what's a square that is defended by a pawn and will be a nice central uh, square where you're attacking multiple areas of your opponent's side. So here we can be thinking of d5 and also c5 at one point, right? But right now, the d5 square is being defended by the e4 pawn. So this will be a nice outpost for the knight, correct? Because if we can think, we can bring the knight all the way here. They'll try to challenge our knight. We can always just push this pawn uh, c4 forward and if our knight here is on d5 both pawns are protecting our knight and if they were to capture we can capture with the c or e pawn maybe like c pawn and we have a protected pass pawn for the end game right it's a pawn that is a few squares away from promoting so how can we do this right how can we bring the knight to d5 for example Sometimes we forget that the pieces, the bishops, the rooks, the knights even, can go backwards. Except the pawns. The pawns are the only pieces that cannot go backwards. But here, a nice move to consider, maybe not the top choice for the computer, but it's in the top three, is knight b1. Right? You would think a little bit counterintuitive, like I'm supposed to always go forward. But sometimes you have to go backwards to find a better square in the future. So here, the ideas would be to bring the knight to b1, to then bring it to c3, to then bring it either to b5 or d5, you know? So those are some nice ideas to think about for our movement of the knight, of the knight finding an ideal square for it. Because at the end of the day, too, 
is like the idea of chess is that we need to find the best squares for our pieces. You know, we want to have like the maximum approach that we can, you know, to have an advantage in any way. Perfect. Let's move on to the bishops. Okay. So for the bishops, after we developed our knight, we did our first move, our opponent responded with knight c6. Uh, the idea of the bishops is that they can obviously just move once we have moved a pawn forward and they have a clear path out. Okay. So here we have a few options, right? We have an option of going very passive with bishop e2. But the most common two responses in this position are either bishop b5, more active, you know, attacking the knight already because we want to like at one point, not right away because um, there's some set moves that don't allow you to like just capture here. I mean, if they don't do anything about this, if you think that you can just capture this knight with and winning a pawn in the process, you might be mistaken a little bit because they the opponent has to find this move queen d4, attacking the knight and attacking the pawn with check. So you gotta always be careful for these things, okay? Don't just grab a pawn right away without knowing what the best moves will be for your opponent. If your opponent misses it, awesome. But if they don't miss it, then you might be in trouble. So you gotta be careful, okay? But here, ideal squares for the bishop would be, as we as I mentioned, bishop b5, or also, that would be the Rui Lopez, the Spanish Rui Lopez, or bishop c4, leading into the Italian game. Okay, the idea of this is like now we're like looking at a nice pawn here on f7 at one point. We can even go for a fried liver attack at one point, not right now, after moving the pawn forward or so. Or just going for some activity, uh, just already targeting at some like key squares against the opponent's king. All right. So that's the nice thing about the bishops. The bishops belong in the nice open diagonals because without the position being open, they cannot really do their work easily, right? Let's look into the second position of the bishops. <laughs> and here, for example, what will be a nice uh, a nice move for the black pieces? What do you think? So we're here in the black pieces after our opponent made the move d3. What will be a good move to consider, right, um, in this position? And hopefully you thought of bishop c5. Bishop c5 belongs in a, in a nice uh, open diagonal. The good thing about this move is like if they were to kick you out or something at one point, I mean not right now, you can always just bring the bishop like this and then always tuck it in here on a7, always looking at the long scope along the diagonal here, right? So that's a nice move for the black pieces, just going like bishop there and then just ready to castle next turn. Okay, so open diagonals, always open positions for the bishops. And then we're going to look into the third position for the bishops here. And this is a Catalan opening. Where uh, after our opponent made the move d5, we need to look, we need to actually find the move here, bishop g2. We already had the g3 uh, pawn push. And you may be thinking, oh, they can just capture this pawn. And our opponent can just capture this pawn. But the good thing about this the, this bishop here on g2 is that it's in the open, in a long diagonal here. Very powerful bishop. And although you're losing the pawn right away, you can win it back. But also, your bishop is always very strong looking at the rook through extra vision. Right? So this is a very strong opening for the white pieces. The Catalan opening starting in the d4 opening, right? So the queen's pawn opening. The Catalan is very strong, and sometimes taking this pawn can be dangerous for the black pieces if the white, uh, the white player in this case uh, knows how to play the opening. Okay, so we gotta always be careful. So we have the open, open squares for the bishops that they can go to, and also moving the bishop here to g2 after the the g3 uh, push of the pawn. That's called a fianchero, fianchero, fiancheroing the bishop here on, along the diagonal. Okay, so that is. That is a good thing there. Perfect. Let's look into the rooks now. The rooks. So in this position, we are the white pieces. So what would be one of the good moves uh, for the white pieces here? Right? We can think a little bit. So first of all, we know that our knight is being under attack and they can always double up our pawns, but we're not too stressed out about that. Okay, so a nice move to consider. So 
top engine move is like bishop d6 um uh, apparently you know attacking the rook but also another uh, a top move in this position is to bring the bishop sorry the rook to d1 and that's the thing like uh, rooks belong in open on open files that's where they're the most active you know so now if the knight ever moves or something now you can just capture the queen for example here in this position you always have ideas also of bringing the rook here to b7 and they belong in the open uh, files okay so what happens here if they just capture our our knight now we have a big advantage with plus and a plus two position for the white pieces because we have ideas of at one point maybe moving the the king out of the way and then just going for an attack toward their opponent the opponent's king yes but here even we have uh just nice ideas of like if they were to move the queen to try to bring it at one point maybe here or something we can still have an initiative and we have the bishop pair in this position so we don't have to stress out too much about doubling up our pawns here we have the bishop pair we now we have the open files at one point we can move our king out of the way and then bring the rooks back in into attack i like to attack our opponent's king right so our opponents need to always be careful like that but remember that our rooks belong in the open files that's where they're the most powerful okay so let's look at the second position for the rooks because this is another important ideal um, concept that we need to keep in mind so here in this current position for the white pieces will be a nice move to consider there could be a couple of moves here it doesn't have to be just one right so yes the rooks belong in the open files but the second thing you need to remember and know i guess is that the rooks are the strongest for the white pieces in the seventh rank and for the black pieces in the second rank okay so what does that mean so here for example a good move would be to bring the rook to b7 rook b7 and now your rook is controlling the whole uh, rank in this position and that's a very strong rook because your next move would probably be to bring the other rook here to d7 and now you're looking at capturing this pawn capturing this pawn and it's kind of hard to get rid of this rook right so for example here like rook e um let's say if they go for something like this if they challenge your rook what will you do right what will you do in this position would you just capture this rook i mean you can but what's even better than that keeping the tension keeping uh the the attack in this position we just patiently bring the other rook because if they were to capture us we can even just capture let's say if they capture us here on b7 we can even have pawn captures or you can also like have rook captures both work the pawn captures is stronger because now this is a very dangerous pawn it's ready to promote and the only move for the black pieces is to bring the rook to b8 and here you have to find a crazy well it's not crazy but it's an ideal move it's rook c8 the idea of this move is that they cannot really do anything here right so the rook the black rook here has to capture this pawn and you may think why what if you try to get closer to the to the rook or make another move or even like try to get some breathing room for your king now you have this move rook c8 check attacking the king and also attacking the rook if they were to move the the king you just capture a rook for free and if they capture a rook you capture back with a promotion so that's why rooks on the seventh are very very dangerous right they're very powerful so i hope these concepts help you a little bit and like let's do a summary of the ideal squares right so again for the knights the first minor piece to develop um because they are very flexible they just jump and do things like that right so it's easier to move them although they're tricky to move in sometimes like in the second position again little summary bringing the knight to b1 is a new concept that you might may have not known before but hopefully this helps you think of new ways of moving your knight right like sometimes going back to then go forward and finding better ideal squares outposts and have a look a good control of your opponent's position bishops bishops belong in the open uh spaces so for locked like locked positions and locked positions meaning that the pawns are all stuck together they cannot really have a, a further progress like forward progress in locked positions and closed positions the knights are very powerful because they can jump over the pawns 
in open positions when there are no pawns, like there are some a lot of gaps, a lot of spaces, a lot of squares open and available, the bishops are very strong because they can look all over the board, right? Like along the diagonal um, of the board. So they're more powerful because they can reach further distances than the knight, right? Although they can only see half the, half the board, but they're just faster. Okay, so open positions for the bishops, close positions for the knights. And also remembering that we have the moves in the opening, for example, you know, bishop b5, bishop c4, you know, already bringing it out because our next move will be castle and our king to safety. That's the idea, right? You develop your knight, you develop your bishop, and then you bring your king to safety, and then you go on ahead with your plans. Okay, and remember that our third idea of the bishops here was fianchettoing a bishop. Fianchettoing a bishop, meaning that we just put it here on g2 after a g3 push, b3 push with this, you know, uh, b6 push, and the bishop here on b7, or also a g6 push of the pawn and bring in the bishop here to g7. That's a fianchetto of a, bitch, of a bishop, right? And then the bishop, although in the Catalan, for example, you're giving away a pawn, but you have a lot of compensation and very strong bishops here, okay? And lastly, the rooks. Again, the rooks belong in open files, right? The open files, like this, that's where they're very strong. But also, they belong for the white pieces in the seventh rank and for the black pieces in the second rank that's where they're the strongest and you can take advantage of those positions and try to win your games like that i hope these concepts these brief concepts help you understand and get more ideas of where to place your pieces in this ideal squares where you can have a great advantage and hopefully start winning some games like that i'll see you in the next video